Okay, here's the wind turbine uh, taken down and just to show how it's put together, it's got six blades uh, that are hooked onto an upper pulley that turns a lower pulley where the uh, uh, where the, the DC generator is. Uh, there are six blades hooked to it. I tried it with three, but uh, needed a little bit more torque to push that uh, V-belt around. The mechanical advantage I'm getting is about uh, two and a half to one. So every time the blades turn once, the uh, generator motor turns uh, about two and a half times. Um, that's necessary. This happens to be the 38 volt Amatec, and it requires uh, a great deal more speed than the 30 volt or the 99 volt did. So uh, uh, anyway, gearing, it turned out to be necessary. The upper pulley was just put on with some parts I got at Home Depot for evaporative coolers. I think it's a, it's a three quarter inch uh, shaft um, that, uh, and uh, then two pillow blocks, uh, three quarter inch. And uh, then the shaft collars here, uh, are one here and, and then one over here, actually keep the uh, shaft from from moving or coming off. Uh, the V-belt, uh, um, I had measured that beforehand with a uh, sash cord and uh, it measured uh, 39 and a half inches. But it is sensitive. If it's too tight, then um, it'll bind and make a lot of extra work and won't want to turn. And if it's too loose, then the uh, drag from the uh, generator under load will make the belt slip. So there is a happy medium. I found that for a 39 and a half inch measurement that a uh, 40 and a half inch belt with just a one inch slack uh, worked just about perfect. You can see down here below it, uh, this is where the generator is and I just mounted that with a couple of uh, uh, dryer hose clamps that I got at the plumbing section at Home Depot. You can see that the, uh, the uh, flight gear here actually mounts on a pivot which is really a piece of one inch pipe, uh, a nipple 10 inches long, and it goes into a, uh, a one inch pipe floor flange. And that fits just about perfectly into one and a quarter inch EMT that I used for a mast. Uh, it is sensitive to how big the tail is. I first had the tail a little bit small and it didn't want to rotate. Uh, so I don't exactly have any calculations for it, but uh, you know, it's pretty obvious when it isn't big enough. The, uh, uh, the overall length of the 2x4, which makes up the main body, is just a little over 3 feet. Um, I don't know how long it is overall, but I had the tail stick out quite a bit further. The way I located the, uh, the pivot mount um, was just to find the, uh, the balance point just by picking it up. And uh, that's, it's pretty easy to find the balance point. And then, uh, of course, I drilled a hole down the middle of it, and that's where the, uh, the wire will go uh, to go to the charger controller. So anyway, let's get it up and, uh, uh, and watch it fly. Okay, uh, here it is up and in full flight. And uh, you can see it moves along pretty quickly. And remember that uh, the motor is going two and a half times faster than the blades are. So uh, that's certainly getting several hundred RPMs right now. Uh, Anyway, as I said before, the mast is uh, uh, mast is uh, one and a quarter inch uh, uh, metal EMT conduit, and I have that uh, hooked on the side of the uh, shed, so I didn't have to guide it, guy it. And uh, there are two uh, uh, saddle clamps holding it on, and uh, down at the bottom, I have a kind of a, a, a rig up there of some pipe. You can see that the top uh, pipe tee is where the, uh, the wires will eventually come out. Of course, the, the uh, windmill is not turning under any load at all right now. But uh, uh, that's another, uh, uh, below the open tee is another tee, and it just sort of rotates around some one inch pipe. So uh, anyway, uh, uh, that's pretty much the setup. You can see it really flies sometimes. You know, it's, uh, it's, it's really moving now.